Uh, we always enjoy uh, starting our year here with you. We endeavor to be prayerful about what we come and share with you. You know, uh, if you've been in, in some of our services through the years, you know, man, I like to get happy. I like to shout and run around and, you know, that's, I, I enjoy that. I was raised Southern Baptist. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I, I've been wild ever since. I don't know what happened. But, you know, every, every service has its designated purpose and intention, and you have to flow with it. I can't come in and make something up. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't do any of us any good. So I want to give you what the Lord gave me, and uh, I believe it'll be a blessing to all of us. It'll be a help to us as we begin to navigate uh, this year. Uh, so you, you ready? All right, amen. Father, thank you for our time together this morning. Speak through our lips. Give us utterance. Give us wisdom. Give us insight. Uh, and may what is spoken uh, be ministered effectively to every heart in the way and in the manner in which they need to hear it. Uh, and we give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, my, um, my daughter, uh, Madison, she's a senior this year. She's on several uh, mailing lists of different ministers. I don't make it a habit uh, in the beginning of a year personally uh, because I, I minister to people in churches. I don't make it a habit of trying to hear what everybody uh, in, the, in the body of Christ is saying about the year so that I don't cloud uh, my own personal sense of, of uh, you know, openness to maybe what God would like to say and show me uh, to the people that I'm ministering. But anyway, my daughter said, Dad, uh, she said, uh, Brother Rick Renner, anybody familiar with Rick Renner? Uh, uh, he's a, a wonderful man of God, uh, very knowledgeable uh, very proficient in scripture, Hebrew, Greek, proven track record, solid, not very, you know, he's not given to a bunch of drama, uh, just a good solid minister. And she said, Dad, uh, Rick Renner sent out a uh, 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 newsletter, and she said it had a pretty interesting commentary for, for the year of 2024. She said, you may want to read it. I said, well, I'll put it downstairs on my desk, and, and when I get a moment, I will. And so... Uh, I did. I read it. And as I did, it really, uh, as we say, struck a note in my spirit. Amen. And so it drew my attention. And so I began to ponder and pray over it. And I knew of a certainty uh, that I was to share it with you along other things this morning. So basically, uh, the scenario here was uh, Rick Renner and his wife, Denise, uh, were on a flight uh, he had purposed in his heart that during this flight, because it had a little bit of duration, that he was going to be prayerful, he was going to ponder, he was going to listen to the Holy Spirit to see if there was something uh, that perhaps God wanted him to relay to his friends, his partners, and maybe uh, different uh, aspects of the body of Christ that he was going to minister to. And he said, as the flight was in process, uh, the pilot came on. And he made this announcement. He said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there is some turbulence ahead. We want you to remain seated, uh, buckle your seat belts. We will arrive safely, but just stay seated with your seat belts uh, buckled. And uh, he said, when the pilot said that, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit spoke these words to him and he penned them. And he said, the year of 2024 will be visited with turbulent episodes across the entire globe. Now, you know, an episode is an event or a series event uh, or, or a series of events that are part of a sequence, right? So it's not something going on all the time. Episodes, all right? Events or a series of events uh, across the entire globe, especially in the realm of finances, politics, and in or among the nations. These episodes will be of a sort that could potentially cause those who were not rooted in God's word to be deeply disturbed. But for those who stay in faith, in peace, in love, in fellowship, and continue sowing seed for the sake of eternity, they will experience a supernatural power. 
that will cause them to be unmoved, unshaken, well provided for, and to walk in a much needed divine assurance, divine peace, divine power, and divine and supernatural victory. Yes, those who stay in faith, in peace, in love, in fellowship, and continue sowing seed for the sake of eternity, they will be blessed, empowered, joy-filled, sustained, and they will miraculously thrive even though the world around them seems tossed with a tempest. Now, you notice I didn't read that with my handkerchief out, shaking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When God speaks to us as members of the body of Christ by His Spirit through appointed vessels, He doesn't do, do so with the intention of causing us fear or uncertainty. Are you with me? Or, or to get on the defensive. He speaks to us simply uh, to make us aware so that we incline ourselves more intently as Pastor was suggesting uh, to his leading, to his presence, to his influence, to his word, so that our paths and our decisions and our directives are effectively influenced by him so that we can remain, as stated above, in a position uh, where we're unmoved, we're unshaken, we're well provided for, and uh, where we walk in divine assurance and peace and power and as stated supernatural victory, even if the world is in turmoil. So in John 16 and 13, Jesus, of course, uh, speaking of the person of the Holy Spirit, he said, well, however, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit doesn't speak of his own authority. He takes the knowledge, the wisdom, the insight, the directives of God and Jesus Christ and transfers them uh, to you and I. And this is such a valuable asset to you and I as, as believers. We've got a partner. We've got a helper in life that shows us things to come. Praise God. If we're listening and responsive, right? And then assists us in making preparation and giving us wisdom uh, to navigate the paths that, that are before us. So I believe that God always endeavors to show us things to come as his, as his people. Uh, to help us position ourselves for protection, for provision, even advancement in the most unlikely times and seasons. He did it for Joseph. You remember how God showed Joseph there was going to be seven years of famine? And he said, I want you to store up in seven years of plenty, put the grain in the silos, so to speak, and out of obedience uh, and having that wisdom, right? Man, they just went right through it. Praise God. He did it for the children of Israel when they're in uh, Egyptian bondage, man. And, you know, the plagues are, are unleashing. Everything is chaos. But here they are over in Goshen, protected, provided for. Amen. Under God Almighty. So God knows how to take care of those that belong to him. Uh, you know, many times in preparation... For things ahead, God will direct us to begin to make certain changes. Maybe they're internal, they're external. Maybe uh, they're in various areas uh, and arenas of life that will position us uh, more effectively to navigate what's coming. And it's very important that we listen. Uh, Psalm 37 uh, verse 3 through 5, and also verse 7. Notice, uh, this is an excellent scripture. Trust in the Lord. What's that mean? Man, rely on Him. Put your confidence in Him. Rest in Him. Uh, trust in the Lord. Do good. Do, do what we know. 
Amen. Do the word. Pray. You know, whatever we know to do in God, do it. And you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he'll give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. So we're saying, you know, it's important. God always gives us, I believe, preparation time. And, uh, you know, we need to be, as we say, listening. But notice it says delight, take delight in the Lord. That word delight in the Hebrew means to remain. It's, it has the connotation of pliability, like clay in the hands of a potter. And basically the psalmist is saying, listen, remain open. Remain pliable in the hands of God. Because many times, you know, uh, if God is, is desiring to lead us, we have to maintain an openness and a willingness to change. Right? And to make whatever changes or directives he may be giving us, uh, even if they're contrary to our personal preferences. Sometimes we can get stuck in life we have a certain job. We have a certain place we live. We have a certain thing we're doing. Man, we're settled into a current. We're settled into a stream of life. And if we're not careful, uh, we can stop listening. When God may be a, uh, attempting to get our attention because we need to make some changes or adjustments or shifts in some things. Are you with me? Uh, for the future uh, in order uh, to be positioned more effectively. So uh, one thing we know for sure. When change comes from heaven, it's always for our blessing, for our ultimate good, and perhaps for the blessing and the good of others. So when we sense these things, uh, it's time for you and I to stay steady, give ourselves more intensely out of prayer, and let God know we're listening. Now, I'm not an advocate of making careless decisions in life. I believe in, in making wise decisions decisions and and pondering things but I also know that many times God may be leading you in a particular direction and maybe uh, at the moment uh, you don't have the full picture right uh, you just sometimes have to take a step Acts chapter 8 26 through 27 we see this with Philip we call him Philip the evangelist and of course uh, an angel of the Lord uh, spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza. This is the desert. Now that's all he got. Arise and go. Look in verse 27. So he arose and went. And once he made that move, then more came to light. He encountered the Ethiopian uh, eunuch who was under the authority of Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. Uh, he was born again. Right? He expounded the gospel. Philip expounded the gospel to him. And I'm quite sure he took that knowledge back to Ethiopia. So once again, we don't always have the full picture uh, at the moment. Here's another example. Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Paul, of course, had this encounter on the road uh, to Damascus with the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the end of it, verse 6, trembling and astonished, he said, Lord... What do you want me to do? And the Lord said, Arise and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. <laughs> Amen. So sometimes, once again, we just have to take the first step, and then more light will come. But the wonderful news is this morning, we haven't been left to our own human wisdom in navigating this life and journey. We have a helper, right? And so when it comes to navigating our course, making good deci decisions, drawing on the wisdom of God, raising our children, running our businesses, guarding and keeping our relationships, navigating changes along the journey, in all of these things, we have a supernatural helper, and his name's the Holy Spirit. 
And listen, that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. And I'm acutely aware that everything I'm going to share with you will be review. You're well taught. I've taught this here myself. I know your pastors have, your spiritual leadership has, but I felt very uh, impressed in my spirit as we began this year to bring these principles back into focus so that we are aware, we are listening, we are attentive. Is that okay? So, you know, one of the greatest promises and provisions that you and I have as believers under the new covenant is the promise and the provision and the person of the Holy Spirit. We have a personal helper, strengthener, standby, advocate, teacher, and most specifically this morning, guide or leader living right down on the inside of us. And Jesus gives us some insight into his place of residence. Look in John 7, verse 38. Jesus said, He he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart. Now, the original King James says, out of his belly. Uh, This new King James says, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water, but this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. So basically, once again, Jesus is giving us insight into the actual dwelling place of the Holy Spirit within uh, the life of the recreated human spirit, the believer. And he said, it is out of the belly or the heart, which is cardia in the Greek, And it means the middle or the center, much like a cell. You know, a cell has basically three components. It has the outer membrane, right? The inner cytoplasm, and then what? The nucleus, the nucleus. And of course, we say that the nucleus, in essence, is the life force of the cell, right? Now, if you're good in biology, I may miss that a little bit, but it's basic, you know. So the nucleus is the center or the life force of the cell. And think about our own personal existence. We have the body. We are a spirit. But here in the middle, in the core, in the belly, in the heart, dwells the eternal spirit of Almighty God. Wow. And so this is the arena in which he operates or communicates primarily uh, with you and I and energizes our, our spiritual lives. So Paul writing in 2 Corinthians 13 and 14, uh, of course, he's closing out this letter to the Corinthians, and uh, basically he's praying that they would come to a revelation and experience of three things. He said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and watch this, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now that word communion means partnership, uh, friendship, or it means partnership, let me get that right, fellowship and intimate friendship. Partnership, fellowship, and intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit uh, be with you. So we have a supernatural partner in life. He's walking in us. He's enabling us. He's empowering us. He's teaching us. And more specifically, again, he is leading and guiding us. Now look again, John 16 13. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. And he won't speak of his own authority. He's communicating what is communicated. Are you with me? And he will show you things to come. That's divine leadership. So the point is, most often, uh, the course of our lives and the outcome of our lives is based upon a series of decisions 
that either have determined or will determine our destiny and our end. So that's why the scripture says in Proverbs 3, uh, 5 through 7, notice here's this same admonition. We need to take this to heart this year. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. As pastor said, just don't go about your life. I don't just go about my life. In all of my ways, in all of my days, I'm acknowledging you today. I'm seeking your wisdom, your paths. Lead me, guide me. Are you with me? I don't have my own agenda in life. My agenda is his agenda for me. So, lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths if we give him the opportunity. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I like the New Living uh, Translation. Same uh, verses. Different translation, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. Now, I didn't consort with pastor about what we were going to share, and I had no idea what he'd been sharing. But the same spirit, talking about wisdom and walking in the wisdom of God. So, this morning we're talking about following the leading of the Spirit in this season particularly. And uh, we, we've said that sometimes the leadings of God don't always make natural sense. That's why it says, don't lean to your own understanding exclusively, right? Uh, don't be wise in your own eyes. You and I cannot attempt, and particularly now, to navigate our course in the days ahead based solely upon our intellectual and rational faculties. There's a far greater source of wisdom and insight and help available to us uh, when it comes to not only discerning our path and our purpose, but also in making good and wise decisions that will position us properly. And once again, his name's the Holy Spirit. And we're going to have to rely upon him in this coming year. So Romans 8, 14, and as I told you, this is just review, but it's good to be reminded. The Bible tells us that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now notice, it doesn't say as many as are led by the intellect, Although we do use our intelligence in the decision-making processes of life, of course we do, but once again, not exclusively. It doesn't say as many as are led by the emotions. Sometimes we're tempted to make moves and make decisions out of emotion, pressure, disappointment, discouragement, offense. Are you with me? No, but how are we led? By the Spirit. So it's God's full intention that you and I uh, be successfully led along our journey and divine course by the person and the influence of the Holy Spirit. He knows the plans of God. He knows the purposes of God. He knows the best paths to take. He knows the proper decisions to make. And uh, He's willing to communicate those to us. In every arena of life, he's the spirit of wisdom. He's an expert. Did you hear me? He's the spirit of wisdom. So, with all that in mind this morning, if we're going to follow the leading of the spirit, then certainly it's imperative uh, that we understand how he leads, right? Right? And as we've said to you, and I'm sure others perhaps have likewise said it, it's very important uh, that we don't over-spiritualize the leading of the Spirit and miss the obvious. Are you with me? So, 
The number one way that the Holy Spirit leads us is what the Bible calls the inward witness. Everybody say the inward witness. We see that in Romans 8 and 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with what? Our spirit that we are the children of God. So think about a witness now. In a court of law, what does a witness do? A witness basically verifies or affirms that the testimony of an individual or the account of an individual uh, is either true or false. It is either right or wrong. Are you with me? So that is what the Holy Spirit does. He confirms or verifies to our hearts that perhaps what we're hearing from someone is either truth or error. It is wrong or it is right. Or the direction that we're about to take or a decision that we're about to make is either correct or incorrect right or wrong, he will bear witness with our spirit. Once again, not with our emotions, right? Or our intellect exclusively. So we understand God is a spirit, right? He's the father of spirits, the book of Hebrews tells us. And you and I, as the New Testament proclaims, are spirit beings. And this is the dwelling place where the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in the heart of every born-again believer. Now, you're not a circle. Spirits have bodily form and shape. You understand that? If you stepped out of your body, you'd be recognizable even as a spirit. <laughs> How do you know? Well, you've read that, old, uh, uh, that New Testament uh, situation where Jesus talks about the rich man Lazarus and how he died and then the beggar. Uh, was a rich man and then the poor man Lazarus died. And how he, he saw him over across uh, the chasm in Sheol. And he said, hey, could you come dip your finger in the water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in the flame? They weren't in a physiological body, but they had fingers. They had a tongue. They had eyes. He could see him. He recognized him. Are you with me? So you're a spirit and the spirit of God dwells right here so that's the arena in which he primarily will lead guide and communicate so he bears witness with our spirit now uh, we've said this to you and others have as well I'm sure but it's important to realize that most often the leading of the spirit does not come as we say as a sentence but as a sense okay a perception, an inward knowing. Some people may call it a hunch. But if you're a Christian, we say it's an impression of the spirit. It's a perception of the heart and not necessarily a voice. Okay? Now, there is the authoritative voice of the spirit. And there are times where the spirit of God will speak so loud on the inside that it is audible. I've experienced that several times. Uh, one time when, when I was going to uh, marry the wrong person. You know, you're dating, you fall in love, you, you're overriding this reservation because you really like them. You know what I mean? And so we're getting close. I'm getting close to making a commitment. And I'm walking down the hall of my townhome. And the word, the word of the Lord audibly said to me so loud, if you marry her, it will sabotage your life and ministry. Made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Now, he just confirmed what I already knew. But now listen, it wasn't because she was a bad person or I'm a bad person. It's because our destinies did not coincide. You see, you know, there are destinies. And if you try to merge two destinies that aren't going in the same direction, you're going to have trouble. So sometimes, you know, in the dating scene, it's not about, well, they're good, they're bad, they're right. They're, it could be their destinies are not coinciding with yours. So you really need to, to follow that leading of the Spirit. So needless to say, I did. 
and I got the right one. Woo! She's a blessing, I tell you what. I love my wife. And then, of course, the second time that talk about the audible voice was in, in July of 2003. Now, I was working at Kenneth Hagin Ministries and on the crusade team, associate pastor teaching in the school. But I kept having this impression coming up. And it would, you know, those impressions will take form of thought. And as pastor said, sometimes even picture. But I kept having this impression. I'd wake up, sell your home, sell it now. Sell your home, sell it now. And I'm like, we just redid the kitchen. <laughs> sell it. I told my wife, I said, babes, I, I keep getting this impression we should sell our home and sell it now. She said, we just redid the kitchen. I said, I know, honey. But I, I, I'm telling you, I got this strong inside. So, in obedience, we put the house on the market. In July, we closed. We sold around five weeks or so. Two weeks later, Brother Hagen passed away. And we are sitting in a temporary housing situation. I'm like, wow. We sold our home, Pastor. Brother Hagen's passed. Uh, and I heard the audible voice of the Lord again say, we're sitting there, I'm eating mashed potatoes. <laughs> and I heard the voice of the Lord say, you can go home now. Well, to me, that was very distinct. Because I had told Brother Hagen, he said to me, I train people, I spend years training them, and then they leave me. So I said to him, Brother Hagen, I will not leave you until your time is finished. I had committed that. So when he passed, the word of the Lord, and I said, did y'all hear that? Talking to my mother-in-law and my wife. <laughs> did you hear that? They said, what? I said, I just heard a voice say, you can go home now. Well, I've been away from Georgia since I was 18 years old, 20-something years. We had no children at that time. My parents were in Georgia. They had no grandkids. And I knew Okay, we're going to be transitioning into our own ministry. We're going to go back to Georgia. We did all of that. I had uh, beautiful years with my mom and dad. They're both in glory now. They got to see the birth of their grandkids, enjoy that season. Are you with me? And, and it was wonderful. But that's not the norm, although it can happen. The norm is this impression. This perception, we see it in Scripture. Uh, Acts 27, 9 through 10. Notice Paul is on his journey to Rome to appear uh, before Caesar. Now, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss not only of the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Now, friends, listen. He didn't say he had a vision or an angelic visitation, although later he did, or heard a voice. He said, guys, I sense something's up. There's something wrong here, right? Trouble's ahead. Well, what is it? That's the Holy Spirit attempting to warn Paul that, look, the decision that's been made to sail from Crete is not the correct one. You're going to suffer some harm and loss if you override this, right? But, of course, your heart will know things that your head doesn't know. Paul said, I perceive I sense something's wrong. Many times we find ourselves in uncomfortable situations in life because we have overridden or perhaps we're just unaware of the leading of the Spirit or the witness of the Spirit. So Kenneth E. Hagin, if you're not familiar with him, he was a wonderful minister. He's the founder of Rhema Bible Training Center. Uh, your pastors are associated there. Uh, but he had some good things to say along these lines in a book called Following God's Plan for Your Life. Has anybody ever read that book, Following God's Plan for Your Life? Awesome. But listen to uh, this advice. He said, now someone might say, I'm trying to follow the inward witness. I've made plans thinking that the Lord was leading me in that direction. 
uh, but I have an uneasiness in my spirit about it. What should I do? Well, he said, if you don't know for certain on the inside that you have the Lord's direction and timing, don't make a move. It may just mean that you're to pray out his plan more fully and uh, that you don't have the timing quite right. Stay steady. Continue to seek him for guidance until you're sure. Wait until you have a release in your spirit. That's peace, right? That it's time to move out uh, in that particular direction. And if you begin to move in a certain direction and you get a check in your spirit, Stop. That check or that unrest in your spirit is a stop sign from the Lord. And although you may not understand it at the moment, he has good reason for giving it to you. You see, God knows the future. He will give you a check, as we term it, in your spirit if he sees you moving in a direction that's going to cause you harm or will hinder you from fulfilling his plan for your life. So when the Lord gives you a check in your spirit, it's of the utmost importance that you seek him until you know what it means. Uh, If you don't and you keep walking in the same direction you're going, you'll invariably suffer the consequences of not heeding the Holy Spirit's warning. Now, I'm sorry to say that, you know, there have been times (laughs) in my life where I have overridden the witness of the Spirit to my own detriment because it was something I wanted or something I didn't want. Are you with me? Uh, and, uh, you know, it can end up, or I got in too big a hurry. It can end up costing us. So sometimes we have a tendency to act on the impulses of the flesh. As I said, we get in a hurry. We, we act upon, uh, you know, Pressure, emotion, mind, rather than listening to that quiet prompting of the Spirit. Sometimes we do things and then later we say, we realize, man, I shouldn't have done that. Well, next time, don't. Right? Remember what you felt, if we could use that word, or sensed when that reservation was there. Are you with me? Go back. We all learn differently. We may sense differently, but you're going to have some sense uh, of uneasiness or unrest. Go back, pinpoint that, and next time, remember it. And take some time to ponder, to pray, and to get the mind of Christ. Anybody with me? So Brother Hagin went on to say, it's important not to get too quick when making decisions that affect your life. And he said, remember what Jesus told me. Now, this was in one of the visitations. The Lord told him this. He said, I would rather you be too slow than too fast. Are you listening? Sometimes it's a lot easier to catch up than it is to backtrack. So he said, I'd rather you be a little slow than too fast. But we certainly want to be on time. But he said, when I was still young in my Christian walk, I learned to take time to walk, uh, to wait before the Lord in prayer and in the word until I got it clear in my spirit what he wanted me to do. Actually, one of the greatest assets, he said, that God has provided for the believer in seeking God's plan is the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The Bible says, and I'm just quoting him, 1 Corinthians 14, 14, he who's, uh, when I speak in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, right? So he goes on to say, this is a great benefit in prayer because it's through our spirit that God gives us guidance. So as we seek the Lord for his guidance and direction, the Holy Spirit will help us pray out those things. God's plan as we pray in other tongues. So determine to stay sensitive to those gentle promptings of the Spirit. Why am I sharing this with you? Because we need to make sure that we are sensitizing ourselves in every arena possible this year to the leading and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Life and peace 
come from learning to follow him. So let's finish up this account. Acts 27, 21. Here's Paul and these guys that went ahead and sailed. After long abstinence from food, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me. Well, rub it in, Paul. And have not sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. My grandpa used to say, and maybe you've heard it, some of you have used it, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Anybody ever heard that? Man, I'm all about prevention. I'm telling the girls when they're in the kitchen, hey, pour that over the sink. Not over the counter. If you, if you miss, it's going to go all over the cabinetry. Pour it over the sink. Prevent the catastrophe. Think ahead. <laughs> God's great at prevention. But anyway, how many of you have said, and I know I have, man, I wish I would have listened. Right? But thank God, he's merciful. He'll help us out of our mess. Just like he did Paul and those who were sailing with him. Even though they did not count a loss of their ship and their cargo, their lives were saved. So this is what we call the preventative side. The check. The stop. The disturbance. The uneasiness. That is most often the preventative side. Okay? Where he's attempting to keep you from taking that step or moving in that direction or making a wrong decision. Okay, but then there's also the motivational side where the Holy Spirit is attempting to influence us in a certain direction, to take a certain step, to make a certain move, to do a certain transaction. Are you with me? That's the motivational side. And of course, uh, when it's time to move, sometimes we're like a parked car, man. You can't steer a parked car. That's why we have to do, uh, as we said, we've got to stay open. We've got to stay pliable. Even if we've been settled into life for a long time, keep a listening ear. Times are changing. Seasons are changing. Right? So uh, God will prompt us in our spirit, motivationally. We see this in Scripture. Look at a good example. Familiar phraseology, I know, but I want to rehearse it with you. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Here is uh, Luke uh, talking about uh, the penmanship of his account of the gospel. Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all these things from the very first, to write you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. Now, friends, this is a very significant leading in the life of, of Luke. And... In all of his comments, he did not say, I had a vision appear to me or an angel spoke to me and said, Luke, you must write your account of the gospel. Now we know 2 Timothy 3.16, what does it say? All scripture, all scripture. That means the gospel of Luke. All scripture is inspired by God or given by inspiration. God breathed. And yet Luke said, you know what? It just kept coming up on the inside. Seemed good to me. The things I've seen and heard that I should write my account of the gospel. No vision, no voice, no. no. <laughs> just, just an impression Right? Some of the greatest and most profound leadings of the Spirit will come in the guise of it seems like or it seems as though I should. Things will come up in your belly or your spirit and they will translate many times into thoughts or 
understanding or wisdom or picture, but an impression. It seems like, are you with me? That we should do this, that we should do that, that we should walk in a particular direction, that we should perform a particular task, that I should sell this, or I should buy that, or I should put in my uh, application here, and maybe I should resign there. Right? It seems as though. Now, once again, we just don't act on impulse, but we ponder, we listen, and when things come up and again and again, God knows how to get our attention. Let me give you one more example. Acts 15, 22 uh, through 35. Now, the scenario here, uh, just for your historical uh, setting, is that the, the new Christians in Antioch, man, they're all excited. They're born again. They're on fire. And then these religious uh, Jewish Christians come in. And they begin to tell them, we're, we're happy for you, but you've got to be circumcised. You've got to observe this uh, different uh, areas of the law and so forth. So it's causing a lot of confusion. So that's the background here. Verse 22, it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barsabbas and Silas, leading men among the brethren. They wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Greetings. Since we've heard that some of uh, who went out from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your soul, saying, you must be circumcised, keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. Now watch this phrase. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men uh, to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who risk their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by the word of, of mouth. Then they go on, verse 28, It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. And then they outline the things uh, that they want to say. Verse 30, so they uh, were sent off. They came to Antioch. When they gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter. Verse 31, when they'd read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Now Judas and Silas themselves, being prophets, also exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many works. And after they'd stayed there for a time, uh, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. Now here we go. Here's the council, Pastor James and the elders up in Jerusalem. Hmm, we got an issue. So it seemed good to them to send down Paul and Barnabas. And then, mm, mm, mm. hey, how about Judas and uh, Silas? Just seems like you guys should go with them. Okay, so they go down. <laughs> they take the letter. Everybody's happy. They rejoice over its content. Then everybody goes back home up to Jerusalem. Paul and Barnabas stick around preaching. Okay. And then one other individual stayed around. Notice verse 34. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord to many others. Silas, everybody's going home. I know, I know, but it just, just seems like I need to stay in town. Why, you got family? No. Friends? Mm -mm. Preaching engagements? No, no. I just, it just seems like I need to stay for a while. Now, I can't tell you how many divine encounters and situations have come in my life because I have followed those inclinations Seems like I need to be in that meeting. Honey, we need to go to that meeting. I know it's not a good time. I know it's going to cost money, but it just seems like we need to be there. And following that has positioned us time and time and time again for the blessings of God. Are you with me? Right place, right time, right people. So it seemed like I should just hang around. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> now watch how crucial this decision was. 
Acts 15, beginning in verse 36. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Hey, let's go back now and visit our brethren in every city where they preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. Now there's some dispute. There was definitely a, uh, a family relation. He was either a cousin or a nephew. Okay, there's a little discrepancy among theologians, but he was family. But verse 38, Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Man, Paul was ticked off. The guy left him in the middle of the evangelistic campaign. Verse 39, <laughs> then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. Man, you mean those guys got at it? They must have. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Paul doesn't have a partner. But guess who's in town? Just because it seemed as though I should hang around. Verse 40. Paul chose Silas and departed being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Man, he was in the right place at the right time, in the right position. And you don't hear anything else about Paul and Barnabas. You hear Paul and Silas. This was a strategic, important, divine engagement of God for Silas and his ministry. And it all came in the guise of Seems like. <laughs> Isn't that wild? But it's true. Very significant leading. So, this morning, I know this is elementary for some of you, and maybe you've heard it many times, but I want to encourage all of us, now in this season, do what seems good. Perhaps uh, you've been pondering some things in your spirit of late and maybe something's been coming up over and over in your heart for a while. You've uh, had that little sense of maybe dissatisfaction or uneasiness regarding your business, uh, your family, your finances, your housing, uh, whatever the situation may be. And maybe God's attempting to get your attention to make some adjustments. Or some changes, or some transitions, or to redirect, or to let go of some things, or to acquire some things. Let's be prayerful. Let's be attentive. Let's seek Him earnestly. Let's pray in the Spirit and get clarity. Now, that doesn't mean this morning we're going to go out antsy, anxious, panicking, trying to make something happen. If God is dealing with you, you will know it as a born again child of God. He knows how to get our attention. Things will come up again and again, even if he has to use somebody from the outside to help you. I remember we were praying about our kids when they were in preschool. They were about to finish preschool. And, you know, uh, we, we really earnestly wanted them to be in the right place from kindergarten up. God, where do you want our children? Where should they go? So, man, we're praying, praying, praying. And uh, so I go with him at that time. We went over to the dance class, you know, in their little tutus, and I'm sitting there. Daddy, Lola had something to do. So I'm sitting there, and this lady comes and sits down in the chair next to me. We're watching. She said, well, are those your little girls? I said, yeah, they're, they're right there. I said, where's yours? Oh, over here. I said, oh, what grade are they in? She told me. I said, well, what school do they go to? And uh, she said, Strong Rock Christian School. You ever heard of it? I said, no, I haven't. Never heard of it. She said, oh, it's a wonderful school. I said, great. So the next week or so, I go to gymnastics. They want, you know, we let them do everything until they decided what they wanted to do. You know how it is. So thank God they didn't do the gymnastics because we'd been on the road all the time, you know. <laughs> Some of you may have been in it. But we're sitting there in gymnastics. I'm sitting there minding my business. This lady comes and sits down next to me. said, hey, hey, how are you? Yeah, great. Where's your kids? Oh, out there, da da da. Where's yours? Over oh, here. What grade's your kids in? Oh, they're in middle school. I said, where do they go to school? She said, Strong Rock Christian School. She said, actually, I'm a I'm a teacher at Strong Rock. You ever heard of it? I said, well, not until last week. She said, oh, it's a great place. I said, hmm, 
So I go home. See what I'm saying? You got to pick up on things. I said, honey, I've had two people mention that school to me. Let's go look it up somewhere and, and see about it. So what do we do? We took the step. There was a prompting. You see what I mean? Even though it was external, God can help us. And of course, uh, man, the minute we walked in, we knew that was their place. And they've been there all the way through Madison's graduating this year. And it's been a tremendous blessing. They're going on uh, mission trips and so forth. Anyway, y'all listen so good. The point is, God will help us. Are you with me? Let's don't get anxious. Try to make something happen. He knows how to get our attention. But then we need to be prayerful. Right? Pray it out. Seek his wisdom uh, on the how and the when. Now, maybe you've attempted to do something in the past. You felt like it was God, but it didn't work out. Uh, and you could never get settled on the inside. Maybe it was, a, it was a timing issue. You know, it's not only the important to know what, but also when. Things have to be done in the right season. Can you say amen? So here we are, 2024. It's going to be a good year for us. But this is what we're going to do, Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 again, just closing in the Message Bible. Here's what we're going to do. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice. And in the New Testament, we mean His guidance. Listen for His guidance. In everything you do, everywhere you go, He is the one who will keep us on track. Woo, and He's going to. So, what's God saying to us this year as members of the body of Christ? I want to read it to you again. The year of 2024 will be visited with turbulent episodes across the entire globe, especially in the realm of finance, politics, and in the nations. These episodes will be of a sort that could potentially cause those who are not rooted in God's word, to be deeply disturbed. But for those who stay in faith, stay in peace, stay in joy, uh, excuse me, stay in love, stay in fellowship, and continue sowing seeds for the sake of eternity, what's going to happen? They'll experience a supernatural power that will cause them to be unmoved, unshaken, well provided for, and to walk in a much needed sense of divine assurance, divine peace, divine power, and divine and supernatural victory. Yes, those who stay in faith, stay in peace, in love, in fellowship, and continue sowing seed for the sake of eternity, he just repeated it, will be blessed. Say, I'm blessed. Empowered. Joy-filled. And sustained. Whew. And they will miraculously thrive even if the world around them seems tossed with a tempest. Whew. So here's what we're going to do, right? How many of you know God can do amazing things in the most uh, seemingly inopportune times, right? So we're going to keep our ears open. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to stay seated. Everybody say stay seated. Just like the, the, the pilot said, we're going to keep our seat in heavenly places, in Christ, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. We're going to keep our seat of authority. We're going to keep our seat of dominion. We're going to buckle our seat belts. We're going to stay in faith, stay in peace, stay in joy, stay in love. Are you with me? And... We're going to pay attention. We're going to listen intently and diligently to the leadings and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Very important. And if we will, we will come out and come through 2024, man, with no smoke. Glory to God. Supernatural victory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? So why did, why did I share it? Well, first of all, the Lord told me to. But also, just so that you know, guys, we are aware, we're listening, we're prayerful, and we're paying attention. We're not on the defensive. We're going to access wisdom as pastors have been teaching. 
All right. Let's just bow our heads for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the kingdom we're a part of. Thank you for the authority and the position that we occupy. And uh, we're looking forward to all that you have for us this year. We're not anxious about it. We're not fretful about it. But we look uh, with an expectation and we're going to walk uh, in wisdom. We're going to walk in peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, For those who are listening, I'm speaking now to position, to prepare, and to show you how to navigate the days that are ahead for you will see a shift among the nations, among society, and economically. But as it is written, those who honor me will I honor, saith the Lord, and will safely keep and provide as under the shadow of my wing you continually abide. So move forward with an internal sense of confidence, not in cowardice or fear, but in faith and divine assurance as you navigate this year. For all who call upon my name will stand unmovable and will advance my kingdom purposes and will no matter what the circumstance. Yes, there will be episodes of turmoil, perhaps more intense than heretofore. But that's just because the time is short and you're standing closer to the door of the king's coming when the trumpet will sound and you will ascend and of the joy and the peace and the glory there will be no end <laughs> so rejoice stand strong be courageous do not dread just stay filled with my spirit, filled with my word, and purpose to be led. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, I'm led. You believe that? You are. You are. It's not a hard thing. We're just going to pay attention. Amen. Everybody stand up this morning with me. Praise God. You know, maybe it was a little different than you were anticipating. But we got to do what the Lord says do. Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all want to sing a little song with me? I didn't say I'm going to sing one for you. I'm going to let you... After all those years of the Rama Screamers in band, <laughs> they called us the Rama Screamers. So I, I, I said to boys, give me, some, give me some reverb, man. It covers the multitude of sin. Hallelujah. But I want us to sing this little song together. It's called Led by the Spirit of God. I don't know if you singers want to come up. Y'all can sing it with me. Uh, you'll catch on, but I'll, I'll show you how it goes. Y'all come on back up. Yeah, and then you're already up here. Come on, singers. Come on up here. Go ahead and... Uh, Start that track. It's called Led by the Spirit of God. It's just a little old chorus. Turn it on up now. 
And y'all are. Ooh, yeah. And y'all just get a mic. It goes like this. I'm led by the Spirit of God. Are we? I'm led by the Spirit of God. When I don't know which way, what to do, how to pray, I'm led by the Spirit of God. Come on, sing it with me. I'm led by the Spirit of God. Make that your confession. I'm led by the Spirit of God. When I don't know which way, what to do, how to pray, I'm led by the Spirit of God. Listen now. If I'm not settled or sure, And the decision seems hard I'll just quiet my mind Follow peace deep inside I'm led by the Spirit of God Everybody say I'm led by the Spirit Come on Yes I am Oh, I'm led by the Spirit When I don't know which way, what to do, how to pray, I'm led by the Spirit. Sing it again. Oh, I'm led by the Spirit of God. Are you? You are. I'm led by the Spirit of God. When I don't know, when I don't know which way, to do how to pray I'm led by the Spirit of God listen now if something tells me don't go or in a different direction I'm pulled hey I won't override I'll just follow my God. I'm led by the Spirit of God. Everybody say, I'm led by the Spirit. He gives me we can be. I'm led by the Spirit of God. When I don't know which way, what to do. I'm led by the Spirit of God When I don't know which way What to do, how to pray I'm led by the Spirit of God I'm led by the Spirit of God We're all led Hey, I'm led by the Spirit of God. Aren't you glad we can be? Amen. Praise God. Pastor, I'm going to turn it back to you. Glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to be led. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, Lord. Hey, that was so good. Wasn't that good? Good reminder. Um, man, I'm not gonna. I want, want to add a ton to any of this, right? But one thing you can say is thank you, just like what you'll find from him over and over again. Thank you for the gift. When you don't know what to do, what, how to say, here's what you say: Thank you that I have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you don't know what to do, how to pray, you, like you said, I'm led by the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. This is the place, a place of thankfulness. And then, man, I'll tell you what it does: it guards your heart. Right? It keeps it clear when you thankful. Thank you for the spirit. Thank you for direction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the gift? This is what you say when, when you're given a gift. He said, Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm sending you a gift. Thank you. 
And I'll tell you, it'll keep you, guard you, lead your way. Father, thank you for this word. We, we thank you for it. We hide it in our hearts. We thank you for direction. We thank you for the stop. We thank you for the go. And we thank you for the working of your Holy Spirit to discern and to show us clearly what is you and what's not you. When yes and no. So, Father, just that unfolding, even of hearts this morning, your yes and your no, we are led by you. And we say thank you for leading us. Your plans for us are good. We thank you for in Jesus name if you're here today and you don't know Jesus I don't want to close this service if you never made Jesus the Lord of your life and like he was saying the time is short the Bible says that when you're born again his spirit comes in and, and, and dwells on the inside of you so you're not you can't be led by the spirit of God until you're born again to where he comes and he resides on the inside of you if you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you you need to make uh, make that decision today. I want you to just raise your hand. You say, I, I, want, I don't know where I'd spend eternity. I've never asked Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Before we glow today, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't see any hands in here, but uh, I know we always have people online. I'm going to go ahead and lead you all in a prayer, um, a prayer of uh, salvation. It goes just like this. You believe in your heart and you say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'd be saved. And so we just, I'll lead you in this prayer. Just repeat this after me. Say, Father, today I come to you because you're knocking on the door of my heart. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to pay the price for my sins. I believe that he died and that he rose again. And today I'm claiming Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I'm asking you to lead me. You're my Lord. Thank you for the good days, the plans you have for me. Lead me in them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight. And if you can't make tonight, we'll see you Wednesday. God bless.